Mo is next in Detroit. Hi, Mo. Welcome to the Entree Leadership Podcast. How can I help? Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me on. It's it's really an honor. You uh, you changed my wife's life and I cool. uh, with your financial peace. And the Entree Leadership has just been an awesome, godly, you know, blessing to our business. So well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. How can we help today? Yeah. yeah. So I'm the owner of a young residential tree service. Last year, we cleared a little bit over 300000 in revenue, and this year, we're looking on track to do about seven hundred and fifty. and including my wife and I, we have five employees total, mm-hmm. and so the situation is, everything's great. You know, we've been very blessed. Um, yeah, you doubled. We're, we're excited. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. And I, uh, I could double every year. That'd be neat. <laughs> Man, if you were doubling every year, holy cow. Yeah, really. <laughs> You only only two boat. cows, yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right, Dave. I uh, So basically, my brother is one of the employees. Mm-hmm. And when it's good, it's great. And when it's not, it's not. Um, and we're working really hard to develop a culture that's, you know, rooted in my faith. And I'm in this challenging position of having him have, you know, behaviors that are kind of consistent and they're antagonistic to the culture. But then my my higher calling and priority is, you know, that I witness and reflect my actual beliefs, you know, and that I actually, you know, extend grace and mercy. Um, so I'm in that challenging position, and I'm just curious what you would do and if you have any opinions on that. Um, allowing someone that we love to misbehave is not grace and mercy, it's cowardice. Okay. That's not that grace and mercy is kindness and loving someone enough to say, Hey man, I love you so much. I mean, I'll do anything for you, but you, you know, I'm growing a company that's, we're going to act this way at this company. And if you don't want to act this way, you can't be here because it's not good for you because the guys don't look up to you. And, um, so it's, and, and it may not be for you, um, and we'll still be brothers and I'll still love you and I'll still help you in other ways. But if, if you're going to be here, the folks that work here do it this way. And, um, that's the net, net, net. Now, I mean, you can get there in gradual conversations, but, um, uh, if I have, uh, some, if I have a good friend, um, which I don't at the moment, this, so this is a false example, okay, but I have had this happen, um, that um, is addicted to cocaine. He's not working for me, but let's just say I've got a good friend. If I just wink at him and go, well, I'm a, I'm a person of grace and mercy, and so um, I'm not going to address that. I'm just going to smile and pat him on the back, and we're all going to go on our way because I'm kind and I'm graceful and I'm full of mercy. That's not really mercy, that's just cowardice. I'm not really loving him by letting him kill himself. He's my friend. I'm supposed to love him enough to say, hey, dude, man, you're killing yourself. Your wife's going to leave. You're going to lose everything. Your kids aren't going to respect you. You're going to ruin your career. I mean, man, I love you. Come on, I'll, I'll go with you. Let's go down here and sign you into rehab, and I'll pay for it. Uh, let's go down here and let's do something. I mean, dude, I am. you're not going to do cocaine in front of me. And, be, and, and me be okay with it. I don't think that's cute. I think that's a drug addiction. And I think it's going to ruin your life. And I love you too much to participate in any way with a tacit endorsement, meaning standing by and watching it happen and saying nothing. So that's an extreme example. But now let's take that over into the company and with your brother. And so if um, Rachel Cruz, my daughter, Ramsey Personality, decides um, that she's going to... Uh, cuss everybody out in the control room. Well, we're not going to do that. By the way, that wouldn't even occur to her, but, um, it's a bizarre, it's a bizarre example, but, but I mean, I would just be sitting down with her and going, Hey, (laughs) that's not going to get you where you want to go. You know, it's not good for you. I love you too much to allow that kind of behavior to go on as my daughter, as a team member. Even if you're a grown up, I'm going to stand in here and say, Hey, that's bad. Don't do that. 
It's not me being a daddy. That's just me being a loving friend that says, I'm not going to participate in things that are not good for you. And that's your brother. So he's swearing, he's out drinking, he's carrying on, he's not reliable. Um, he, he's antagonistic to you behind your back, probably. Um, and the guys don't look up to him and he stands out like a sore thumb because he's very different from everybody else there. Is that what I heard? Uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you heard even more than I said. I mean, he's, yeah. Well, I've just done ways, this yeah, a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's great in a lot of ways. I mean, I don't, I I'm not saying he's a he bad dude. Really I'm just are. saying he's, his no, mouth no, is filthy not. and he's, he's antagonistic to the process. Yeah. And he, he yeah. thinks, he, he thinks he gets it. Problem. He thinks he's got to get out of jail free card. Yes. Yes. It's like, so I'm going to sit down with him and go, um, uh, I'm revoking your get out of jail free card as an act of love. You know, I'm really, I'm going to sit down and go, Hey man, I love you so much. And I got to tell you, man, me living my life the way I live it now is the best thing that's ever happened for me. I would love for that for you. And the people that work on this team, all of them are going to be walking. We're going to have a level of uh, kindness with each other. With our customers, we're going to have a level of reliability. We're not going to run around here with filthy mouths because that indicates a, that that low vocabulary indicates a lack of intelligence, a lack of personal growth, and I'm just not going to do that. Um, and, and so, you know, we're, I'll walk with you, and you could slip up. It's not like you can never make a mistake, but I got to see you trying to join me in this walk. And okay. if you don't want to do that and you want to work somewhere else, I understand because you think I'm a, if you, if he thinks you're some kind of holier than thou person or something and you're too stuck up or, you know, you're too much of a Bible thumper or whatever it is. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to do all that stuff. Well, then you don't want to work here because it's not going to be fun for you. Mm -hmm. You got to go hang out with people like you, you know, and this is people like me here. And so like I've got relatives that are that are that way, and I still love them, and we still have relationships. I'm not mad at them, but that I don't. I'm not gonna hang with that every day. I don't want that stuff in my life, and I certainly don't want it in my company. Okay. So does that make sense? I mean, it, it's you're not extending grace. You're you're just if not. If I don't address it, yeah, it because it, it's not helping him. Right. right. I'm thinking about him. I'm trying to help him. And the net net is it helps you and it helps the other people on the team when we help him. But I, you know, him, no matter where he is until he stops doing that, he's not going to have his best life. Agreed. I agreed. Yeah. So we're not helping him by allowing him to now again, if he says, Hey, I'll work on it. I'm, I'm uh, okay. Okay. And then, and then the next week he slips up. Well, that's fine. I'll give him, so I'll give him a pass. It's not like a hundred percent. You got to be perfect day one. But we got to be heading that way versus, you know, my goal in life is screw everything around here up. No, thank you. You know, because he kind of got this weird thing going, like he can get away with it because he's the brother, you know, and that's, that's the problem with family business. The other thing you can keep in mind from this point forward with family business, and we talk about it on here all the time, is the hats thing. Have you heard me talk about that? Actually, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, uh. I had a, uh, Henry Cloud tells a story of a, a dad that had his kid working for him and the kid was goofing off and he was mistreating people inside the business. And, uh, Hen the guy bought two hats, boss and dad. And he called the kid up and he, he, they had worked with him and tried to get him to straighten up, tried to get him to treat people right, tried to get him to be nice. This was an ongoing conversation for two years. And finally it reached the end. He saw him down on the factory floor cussing a guy and he knocked on the window, called him up to his office. He called him up, he put on his boss hat and he said, um, we've worked with you and worked with you and tried to get you to be nice to people. I'm not going to have people treating people that way inside my business. You're fired. He took his boss hat off and put his dad hat on. And he said, son, I heard you just lost your job. How can I help you? Okay. So <laughs> the beautiful part about that story is, is there's two roles here. At work, Mo, you're the owner of the business. Everyone that works there should treat you with the respect and kindness that is due the, uh, the owner of the business. And you should treat everyone that works in the business with dignity and serve them and help them be their best selves, right? Mm -hmm. You're wearing the boss hat. You're wearing the leader hat, the owner hat. And while I'm at work, brother, I'm the CEO 
and you're a worker, and I'm going to treat you like I would treat my other workers with dignity. I'm going to pay you fair. I'm going to be kind to you, and uh, I'm going to tell you the truth, and we're going to we're going to go make some bunch of money together, and I'm going to treat you like I treat everybody else that works here, and you're going to treat me like I'm your boss because I am. And then when we leave work and we go to Thanksgiving dinner, I'll put on my brother hat, you put on your brother hat, and we'll tell brother jokes and cut up and carry on like two brothers at Thanksgiving dinner. But at Thanksgiving dinner, we're two brothers. That's different roles. So the Ramseys do it that way. We, we talk about hats at Thanksgiving dinner because a bunch of us work here, and at Thanksgiving dinner, there's people there that don't work here, and they don't want us all talking business the whole time. So we don't, we wear on, I only wear my Papa Dave hat when I'm with the grandkids. I don't wear CEO Dave Ramsey hat. You follow me? Yeah. And, and, but when I'm CEO, I mean, Rachel Cruz, Daniel Ramsey, Willie Robertson was with us at, at Entree Leadership Summit last week. And Daniel was telling me at breakfast this morning, Willie asked him, Hey, why do you call your dad Dave? Because at work, he's Dave. Everybody here calls me Dave. No one here calls me daddy. Right. But at home, I'm Papa Dave with a grandkid on my knee. Right. And so you, tr you change roles. And so that that's a family business thing. You, you, you're setting up this idea of at work. This is who we are. And and what happens is you go, well, I can't do that to my brother. Oh, yeah, you absolutely better. You better love your brother more than you love anybody else that works there so much that you're not going to tolerate him scrap and his misbehavior for his own good mo. So have courage, kindly, gently, but very strong. We're going to have a very strong conversation, and we're going to start moving in this direction, or we're going to start moving out, one of the two. We got to move in this direction. It's good stuff. Really, really good question. We appreciate you joining us.